Amen. We want to say greetings to everyone and God bless you all for joining us today. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden and this is my wife, Sister Antoinette Bolden. And as always, we're glad to bring you the word of the Lord concerning uh, God's blueprint for uh, family. Amen. Tonight we're going to have a discussion. Uh, I think that's going to be interesting to the to the listeners, those that are listening in, uh, concerning God's will and, and sometimes just the things that, that goes on, I guess, you know, uh, when you're trying to walk in God's perfect will for your life. Amen. And we have a sister with us that's going to share with us, if she don't mind, uh, the, 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 the issue and the situation so that we can start there and address it and just go from there. Amen. So if you will, you can go ahead and, and share that. Okay. Um, basically, uh, I moved here to Tennessee um, like two weeks, a little over two weeks ago because okay. I moved here a little over a couple of weeks ago because um, the Lord gave me a dream and told me that my husband was here. So... Um, so I've been here, and maybe like a few days ago, um, the father of my kids called me, and he started saying that he wanted to get back together, and he wanted to get married and all this. And I was just like, like, why now? Because we haven't been together in like three years, so it was just kind of out of nowhere. And I was like... Is this just a distraction? And then I kind of felt myself like kind of leaning towards the possibility because it just seemed convenient. So, like I know he's not the right person for me and being with him would be defeating the purpose of me being here in the first place, but it's, it's just kind of a hard situation. All right. Amen. So uh, we're going to go from there and uh, kind of, uh, I guess, bring some things out. And uh, as she stated, the Lord has showed her that her husband was here in Tennessee. And, of course, she's supposed to be a part of this ministry as well. And so um, then comes the father of her children, you know, saying that he wants to get married and he wants to you know, to them two to be together. And uh, and you were saying that he's not saved. No. Not saved. All right, so I would like for my wife to address uh, the issue because you were talking about how you were considered it or it was in your mind to, to do that. So if you would address that, that, that part of it or however the Lord leads you to address uh, why a woman would, um, why a woman would, um, I guess, consider that, you know, given the circumstances and things like that, so that I, I just think that, you know, you being a woman, you understand a little bit better and be able to shed some light that maybe uh, men wouldn't be able to shed. So if you would address that. Um, well, I, I can speak about this particular subject from a personal experience, um, from my own personal experience and just from the experience of others that I've known just over the years, other women. And um, there are many situations where um, people try to either get married because of children that have um, come about as a result of their relationship or people try to stay married as a result of that. And of course in this situation you're not married yet so um, and you know that the Lord has already spoken concerning that situation. And I'm just kind of go backwards that I was in a situation myself where I was number one already with someone that the Lord did not designed for me to be with. I was already there or somebody that I just chose for myself for my own selfish reasons. And 
I stayed there in that marriage for a really, really long time trying to um, keep the family unit together because I don't know that there's one single woman on the face of this earth who does not want um, their children to have a father or father figure um, who does not want a husband who you know, does not want two parents in the home there to train and rear the children. Um, and so that was something that I wanted because number one, I didn't have it growing up. And so that was one of the, the vows. Okay, when I say I do, I'm saying I do and divorce is not an option. And so, you know, this family unit has to stay together no matter what. Um, unfortunately, that wasn't God's plan. And so what ended up happening was I went through a lot of turmoil, a lot of disappointment, a lot of hurt, a lot of frustration unnecessarily because I was walking in my own way. I was following after what I thought was the right thing to do. And um, in essence, when I look back on all of that, and, and I know plenty of people who have the same perspective after they've gone through it and they've, oh, I'm going to keep it together for the children and, and things like that. Um, it does more damage to our children for us to give them a picture um, of any type of family life, married life, life in general that does not um, start with God being the head. Even if we're not saying, well, you know, kids, this isn't the husband that the Lord had for me, but I'm staying with this person anyway and I'm going. And we don't have to actually say that, but they'll see the dysfunction that comes with us being outside of the will of God. And we don't want to we don't want to train our children to live in dysfunction, because what will happen is if you truly seek to be in the will of God and you allow yourself to be with someone who is not the person that God has for you, it's going to work itself a loose eventually. It's not going to work out. Not if you're sincerely seeking the path that God has for you and if. God does not have that person for you, then eventually there's going to be a breakup. And then you have to deal with um, the fact that you've put all this time in, then the children have to readjust to something that they never should have adjusted to in the first place. And then what um, seems normal, they don't recognize it as normal because they've adjusted to dysfunction. And all of these things that we say that we're doing for the children, we, we really end up just causing more damage than good in the end simply because we're not following the Lord from the beginning and so in this situation if you know you know Lord this is one of the things that you spoke to me you know and I know someone just came in on the line so I'm gonna just kind of repeat this real quick we have a sister here who shared something personal um, you know with us a, you know, just a personal situation that we're addressing and that we're going to continue to address tonight. And um, so I'm just kind of addressing her directly right now that if you know that the Lord has spoken concerning your marital situation and so you have to keep yourself from moving in your own emotions and you have to keep yourself from doing what your own natural mind thinks is the best thing to do. You have to allow your relationship with the Lord and the word of the Lord to have final say and to supersede and override anything that you feel or think concerning your life. That means you have to continue following him and whomever it is that God has for you, it will be evident. You won't struggle with that. You won't wonder about it. There won't be any second guessing or anything like that. And so... You know, you you made the statement that, I mean, you you didn't um, you're sure that you're not supposed to be with him. Um, he if, especially if he doesn't have a relationship with the Lord, because um, somebody who is following the Lord should not be unequally yoked with somebody who's not. And the man has to lead the family. And if he's not following the Lord, he's not going to lead you to the Lord. So um, that's just kind of to sum that up. 
you know, with that. And there's just for, you know, all who are listening, because, of course, you know, everybody who calls in is not married or, you know, maybe you are married. And, of course, we've kind of gone over this question of, you know, well, what do you do if you're already in it and you're not sure that the Lord put you together? You just have to stay there until either the, this person gets saved and the Lord work it out or it's split up, but you can't make it happen. Mm -hmm. You stay and you honor your vows. But if you're at that place where, you know, you're really seeking the Lord about direction concerning your marriage and things like that, the best thing to do is to continue seeking the Lord. Don't lean to your own understanding because that's where we get in trouble at. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's why the word tells us, you know, over in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, we need to acknowledge him in all our ways and don't think for one second that, oh, you know, I got this part. Lord, I can handle the relationship area. You just handle the job and you handle the boss and you handle the children and you ha handle the family and the neighbors and all of this. But I got the relationship part and we can't make that mistake. Mm -hmm. And let me just say this, uh, sister, and, and for all of those, you know, uh, you may wonder where that comes from, the, the, the even the consideration, you know, and it's because women have this strong sense of family, especially black women, when it comes to, uh, like, if, if once you, you, you've had children with this man, and so naturally, so you want to kind of consolidate the family, you know, the family unit and things. And, and women especially think about their children in, re in relationships, if that make any sense. So you would probably think, when I heard you use the word convenient, you know, and you think, I, I imagine you would think in your mind, well, he's, we have children together, it would work out, we're, we're, you know, we're already a family except we're not married, if that make any sense. So we're already dealing with, you know, we already have children together. So, you know, that that's a lot of where that consideration comes in at. Also, something that the Lord had brought to my attention while while you were talking was um, in the slavery days, um, basically, black men, you know, of course, they were pulling families apart and selling children off and splitting the families, you know, breaking up the family units. Well, you know, in reading black history, you know, if you'll study it, you'll see that when slavery was abolished, it was mostly the black mothers who were going to look for their children. You see, it was it was them that was doing that. They were the ones. Now, it don't mean that, that men weren't looking for the children, but mostly history records that it was black women who were looking for their children that had been sold off when they were little, you know. And so, and a lot of them were successful in finding them and things like that. But I guess what I'm saying is that whole sense of family, it's something that's inbred in, in, in women, you know, in, in women. And, and uh, you know, and just, again, you know, th just talking about how women, when, when they, I guess when they think about family, when they think about um, husband and, and things like that, or who will be their husband, they, if, especially if they already have children, they think, they look at the whole picture. Now, you know, men, for the most part, we look at, oh, she'll be a good woman for me. Some of us have enough sense to know, okay, if I have children, is she going to be a good mother to my children? But women, they come with that in them. He's going to be a good husband for me, but he'll also be a good father for my children if I already have some, you see, or whatever. And so they look at that whole picture, and that's what makes it easier, you know, because, and then, you know, I remember seeing on TV there was a study where they saw, you know, they were basically studying humans and they, was, they were looking at fathers and mothers and the differences between the two, how the fathers, when they were in public places, the average distance that they felt comfortable away from their children was about 50 feet. They could, you know, go roaming around the <laughs> store and, you know, it, in their minds, and that's just how men are, we don't think, you know, it's not just in us to just think, well, somebody can snatch my child or somebody can, you know, because we just, we're not as attached, if, I, if that make any sense. Whereas the women, it was less than nine feet. 
when when their child got more than nine feet away from them, they were looking around because women. I mean, like for instance, my wife. Uh, you know, in our home, if they, if she hear them bumping in the night or whatever, she's gonna get up and she's gonna pace the floor. She's gonna go upstairs and look and make sure everything is okay. Me, I don't think that way. I mean, if I feel like somebody's breaking in here, then it's gonna be something. But other than that, you know, hey, everybody's fine. But if that makes any sense, women think of more along those lines than than men do. Whereas we're protectors and we just, you know, okay. Everything is in place. Everything is fine. But but women, they're more along the line of safety. You know, as far as it, it don't take much, in other words, for them to really spring out and and try to guard the child. I guess you could say. And so I'm, I guess what I'm saying, in essence, is that they bring that into relationships as well. Like you would feel safer. Most a lot of women, if they have children and and maybe they're not married. Or uh, you know, at the moment, um, they feel safer with a a man who's the father of that child. Whereas you know, say for instance, you you marry somebody that's not the father of your biological children, they have to gain your trust not only for you but on your children's side as well. Okay, yeah, they'll treat me well. That's the way women think now. You know, they'll treat me well. But how are they going to treat my children? Are they going to love them the way that I love them? And, you know, because, of course, you probably heard of situations. A man love his wife or treat his wife right, but not necessarily accepting the children and things like that. And so um, I think that, that a lot of that comes with that, you know, from, from that is the woman thinking along those lines of also incorporating the children. And then this society have kind of played into that as well because... It has just been assumed that when mom and daddy split up, children automatically go with mama. You see, and so it, that the society have have played into that as well. And so I think that's where a lot of the uh, just the consideration comes in at. If that if that make any sense of this is besides this is what you already know. I've been with him. I know what I'm dealing with already. Even if it's not uh, the best to deal with, I already know what's there, you know, whereas, you know, and, and it's, it's something because sometimes we can get comfortable or sometimes we, we can learn to adjust better to what we already know rather than meeting somebody for the first time and then having to get to know them, you know, and, and stuff like that and having to trust them, whereas somebody from our past we trust what we know about them already. Okay, you're not going to come in until 11 o'clock. I already know that about you. So we don't have to fight in the future about it. I already know. You know, whereas this new person, I got to get to know you. I got to go through a few surprises. You see? <laughs> and so it's just more comfortable sometimes to us in our flesh dealing with what we already know, regardless of how, you know, lopsided it may be or how outside of God's will it may be. Did you have something you wanted to say? And so I just, I, I think that kind of plays into that as well. And, um, of course, you you know, I'm trying to think, what should I address? What, what the, well, I'm, I'm going to speak from a man's perspective. And that's now you've heard, you know, like I told you, my wife would give her perspective concerning the, 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 the woman. I want to speak from a man's perspective and let you know what's, what angle he may be coming from. And this is for just, you know, women in general as well. A man knows when he's had a good woman and regardless, it doesn't matter how, what he was chasing after or, you know, how odd in the world he may be. He knows when he's had a, a good woman and a lot of times, a man, you know, of course, men, we're just naturally conquerors. In other words, uh, if we're not mature in the Lord, then our mindset would be, um, I want you as long as I think I can't have you. But when I get you, then I look for something else to conquer. 
if that make any sense. That's the, that's, you know, we just, we're conquerors. And so when a man have had a good woman and he's used to her being around, so to speak, you know, in his life, however you may be in his life, he get used to that idea that now this is, this is what I have here, which is why men, and I was explaining that to my wife earlier, that's why men would have a good wife at home or, uh, you know, a good woman at home and then go out and cheat and still expect the woman to be at home. They want both. They want their cake and eat it, too, so to speak. Whereas most of the time a woman, you know, if, if they're out doing that, then they're done with what's at home. They just in transition to go on somewhere. Men, they want what's at home and whatever it is out there. I'm just, you know, just saying unsaved, you know. And so if that's the mindset, then the mindset is also as soon as I think I may be losing you or whatever we have, you know, even if it's not us being together, but just the situation changing in any kind of way, then I'm going to panic and do what it takes to get you, if that make any sense. Is, does that, am I making sense? In other words, you know, I'm used to I'm used to you not being with anybody, or I'm used to you being with me, and and I'm not used to you being Mrs. Whoever, Mrs. Jones, or whoever. And so, as soon as I feel like, you know, you may be actually looking at somebody else, then I'm threatened, and now I'm gonna act right, and now I'm gonna do what it takes to be with you. The only problem is if you give in to that. They'll act good for a little while, but then they'll go back to what they were before because they got you, you see. And so that's the mindset of a man, a conqueror, you know, just one that uh, as long as I know I have you and as long as you're putting up with my mess, then we're fine. But as soon as I feel like there's a threat and somebody else could get you, even if we weren't together, because I can't tell you the number of times I've seen that, you know. We're not together for years, and all of a sudden I see you actually getting interested in somebody else or saying you may marry somebody else. Now I'm, a, now I'm coming after you because I can't stand the idea of the, the, the possibility of me being able to go back to you when I choose. And so if you marry somebody else, then I don't, that door isn't open anymore. Even though I wasn't interested in walking through it until you told me. You see, does that make sense of what I'm saying? So, a lot of times that's the mindset. <laughs> you want to respond to what? Um, no, I mean, that makes, it makes sense. Yeah, that's what's going on. I just felt like it was a distraction. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, we haven't been together in three years. So, it was like, why now? And even when I asked him that, he didn't really know what to say. He was just like, quiet. So, I mean, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what we're wanting to address. We, we address the natural sides of it. We wanted to address those first. But we also want to address the spiritual side. And that's exactly what's going on is a, is a distraction. Uh, if God tell you something and you believe it in your heart, then it's the devil's job to test you. And he's not, and he's going to come, as I've stated before, with what's familiar with you. You know, he's going to come with what is familiar with you. And what's familiar with you is your ex. And uh, so that's what he's going to tempt you with to try to get you, to try to throw you off, you know, off of God's perfect will for your life. You know, and I, I think about something quite often, how many of us miss the blessings of God because we accept, I guess, the devil's pseudo-blessings, if that make any sense? How many relationships have we been in and, you know, all alone God had one person for us, but because we're in a relationship with somebody we shouldn't be with, we've missed what God has for us. And we've, pro we've pushed back the appointment, the divine appointment that God had set up. And you, you see what I mean? And, and that goes on all the time where 
you know, I, I, I guess I kind of think about, um, I kind of think about Ishmael and Isaac, you know. Abraham, the, the, the children of Israel to this day are at war with the children of, of uh, Ishmael and Esau because, you know, one of them's daughter married, the, the other one's son and things like that because Abraham didn't want to wait on the promise at first. He did his own will, which is, and called himself trying to help God out. Well, my wife Sarah can't have children naturally, so I'll take her advice and I'll go in and I'll sleep with Hagar, her maid. And so Ishmael was produced from that. And, you know, and then God had to come and tell him, no, you're going to have a child with Sarah. But, you know, and, he, and so Abraham's thing was, Lord, Bless, bless Ishmael. He's my son. Bless him. You know, he wanted God to accept Ishmael as the son of promise. And a lot of times we won't, we'll get ourselves in situations, you know, and in relationships, and then we want God to bless it. And the whole time, when we, if we look at the history of Ishmael and Isaac, we see in the book of Genesis how the Bible says that basically Ishmael teased Isaac. He tormented him, which is why his mother, Isaac's mother, threw Ishmael and her and his mother out of the house. Well, y'all can't, y'all can't live here anymore. And what happens a lot of times when we don't wait on the promise of God, then we end up producing Ishmaels that's that's designed to torment the promise of God for our life that's designed to try to throw it off some kind of way, if that make any sense, you know. And a lot of times that happens through relationships that we've been in, and, and then we get scarred, we get hurt, and then when we go into the, the relationship or marriage that God has for us, those scars are still there, and we bring them in there, and we're still dealing with the hurt, you know, and, and, and living that in our, in our current uh, relationship or marriage. And so that is part of the purpose is, you know, uh, this whole interaction that's going on. It's, it's a ploy of the enemy uh, to, to, to try to throw you off. Like you said, you know that he's not saved and, and, and things like that. And, of course, you know if you, you know, no matter how good a person may be. Now, they can be the best person in the world as far as good, you know. But if they're not saved then you're not serving the same master. And, of course, if you're not serving the same master, pretty soon the enemy is going to kick up in their lives and, you know, and, and torment you, basically, you know. And, uh, and, and that's what the enemy wants is to throw you off from what God has for you, you know. And I, I just think it's interesting, you know, that um, that's why I was saying that I don't think it's a, it, it doesn't surprise me because it's, that's the devil's job. It just shows you that the devil is on his job. Now, when the devil is on his job in your life, it shows you also that you're on the right track. You know, if, if you weren't in God's will and if you weren't um, in line for what it was that God promised you, then the devil wouldn't sin like my wife called the fake jakes. <laughs> Those that are going to come up, you know, and try to... <laughs> You know, I've heard people say, nobody wanted me until I was in a relationship. You know, when I'm in a relationship, then they just, oh, everybody just come out of the woodwork then. But, you know, that's the devil's job. <laughs> that's his job is to try to get you sidetracked. I think about what the word says about how the ministers of Satan, they transform themselves into angels of light. In other words, they, they try to make themselves look like ministers of God. They so they transform themselves, and that's what people will do. Uh, that God didn't send, they'll transform themselves to look like one thing when really they're not that way at all, you know. When really they're not that way at all, and so we have to be careful that we don't uh, fall for that, you know, that we don't get ourselves um, in trouble with, with getting out of God's will with, with that type of thing because it happens all the time. All the time, you know, we sometimes we maybe we're not patient enough 
sometimes we just, you know, like my wife was saying earlier, you know, most people want to be in a relationship, want to be married, especially women, want to be married, and uh, the devil knows that. He knows that. Now, he, the devil don't like marriage, but he don't mind it if you're married to the wrong person, you know. <laughs> yeah, he don't mind it then, and so uh, it's just important to stay focused and to make sure that you remain in, in God's will, you know, in that matter. And and not entertain it, you know. Don't entertain it. You just cast those imaginations down <laughs> when they when they when they come, you know. And uh, I like you know. I, I guess maybe he's been trying to uh, just sweet talk you, or talk to you, and maybe try to get you to reason. And I don't know if the enemy have even maybe tried to talk you into thinking maybe he's the one. Maybe he's gonna get saved. I don't know, but. You know, I just know how the devil plays sometimes. <laughs> you know, maybe I can lead him to the Lord or something, you know. <laughs> but uh just have to be careful that, you know, like you said, you know that he's not the one. And so when he starts talking, you know, if he tries to bring it up, then just cut that short so that you don't enter into that temptation of even thinking along those lines, you know. Amen. Did you have something else you wanted to say? I guess I was just going to kind of um, guess do a recap for those who are just tuning in and even for those who may um, be now tuning in on television since, you know, we know this will be broadcast there also. You know, we're talking about um, being led by the Lord and the things that, you know, he wants us to do. And concerning relationships, you know, what is it that would make um, a woman want to or even consider being with someone or a saved woman, consider being with someone who's not saved or taking a path that the Lord is not leading her down or even a man. And this is kind of, kind of generalizing this from this uh, specific situation that we're talking about. What makes a man who is not even walking um with the Lord who's not serving the same God or living the same life that um, his ex is living wants to suddenly be with her um, just because it seems like she's moving on. And I think that was kind of how you summed it all up. You know, these are the things that we're discussing. And as children of God, I think we have to be aware um, of the tactics of the enemy. You know, like you said, it's a ploy of the devil to bring back those things to us that are familiar mm -hmm. from our past. Um, those areas that we may have um, been weak in in the past. And, and this, this came out in the message just this past Sunday. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, just this past, where, what is this, Tuesday? Yeah, yeah. just this past Sunday. I've got to think about what day it is. Just this past Sunday that came out in the message, you know, about we, we have to... Um, know the tactics of the enemy and realize that he has not forgotten our past. He has studied us. Mm -hmm. um, he know what bait he used in the past to lure us in, um, to get us to um, fall to the temptations of the flesh. And he's not going to stop doing that just because we're saying that, hey, I'm walking with the Lord now. He's going to try that much harder. And so we have to be aware of what will, what were our weaknesses in the past and make sure we're guarding ourselves in those areas. And for, you know, this particular situation, if it's, hey, it's my kid's dad and maybe we've been, you know, in and out of a relationship or whatever when, you know, when you weren't saved, then that's something that the enemy is going to bring back, you know, or whatever that particular thing is or things that we can recognize you know, I can remember going through this cycle over and over and over again in my past. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to learn how to recognize those things and know that that's a door that the enemy is going to try to open and walk through mm -hmm. so that we can guard that area in our life, that we can um, make sure that we are um, staying focused on what it is the Lord has for us to do and not falling um, prey to our flesh, basically, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, too, sister, I want you to think about where you were spiritually when you were with him 
and then where God had brought you from. And, you know, y'all, y'all are no longer together. And so apparently it didn't work out for a reason. And so, but just think about where, where you are now. You've grown in the Lord. You know, you're not the same person that you were when you were with him. And so think about how, how more intolerable you would be of the situation, you know, as opposed to <laughs> what it was back then. How You know, you, you understand what I mean? Back then you might have been able to tolerate it just a little bit, even though apparently, you know, y'all are not together anymore. But just think about how much more so now you would be intolerable if you're both pulling in different directions to begin with. If you're serving the Lord and he's not serving God, you know, how, how that would be a strenuous thing to you, you know. And so... And that, and that's you know not just for you but for others as well. How, you know, I tell you, two can't walk together. The Bible says that I think it's the third chapter of Amos and the third verse. How can two walk together except they be agreed? And uh, that's a hard thing to deal with. You know, being with somebody that and we're not even. Let's say they they may even be going to church. They may be in church, may even be claimed to be saved, but their lifestyle is going to tell it, you know. And so, <laughs> you know, it's a hard thing to deal with. You know, the Bible says not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers, you know. And, um, you know, he could have just said don't be with believers. But he said don't be unequally yoked, of, you know, with unbelievers and I, the word the key word that I'm looking at there is unequally meaning you know we we firmly believe that God places us with the person that he wants us to be with because he knows we'll be equally yoked and so uh, say for instance you may have somebody that's saved for a year and then somebody that's been saved for 30 years well, you know, if both of you are growing the way you're supposed to be, that person that's been saved for 30 years may see things a little bit different. You see what I mean? So you're not going to be equally yoked even with that in that manner, if that makes any sense. In other words, there's still some growing that has to be done. Still some maturing that has to be done. You see what I mean? Like, for instance, you know, um, me being a 38-year-old man, I, you know, if I was single, I wouldn't want to marry a, a 18 year old. You know why? Because their mind is not where mine is. You see what I mean? I, it would just we would be bumping heads all the time unless I'm just silly, you know, and not, you know, you see what I mean? And so it's important to not only marry somebody that's saved, and and that's why I say it's so important that we allow God to to put us together because. Somebody can be saved, somebody can be in church, and still you're not yoked equally with them. Mm -hmm. you, you, there's a, a, a difference in the maturity level. And, and believe it or not, you will still be fighting the same way you'd fight somebody that's not saved. Somebody that's saved with a carnal mind, that's not walking by faith, you'll be having the same arguments you would with somebody that's, that's not saved, you know. Yep. And so <laughs> you just have to look at it that way as well, that, you know, that devil, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. And so um, that's not something that the Lord wants us to, to deal with, you know. I tell you, it's going to be, uh, it's already a battle when you're married to the person that God has for you because you're two different people and you have to, you know, you have to come and meet in the middle and you have to agree and, and work these different things out, but, you know, going through it, you know, with, with somebody that God didn't design for you, and then I'm going to tell you what I think one of the saddest things about it is, is knowing deep down inside that it's not going to work, and still trying to make it work, still, you know, knowing that at some point this is going to all fall apart, but I'm going to try to make the best out of it, you know. It's like that, that knowing that it's just going to just come apart and, you know, and holding on to it 
but with strings, you know, sometimes children are the strings, sometimes just family structure or security or whatever the case may be, you know. But that, that's a sad place to be in, to see it all, to, to see that ship sinking and still trying to, you know, stay on it as long as you can, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> all right, did you have anything, anything you'd like to say to what we've said? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, if anyone on, on that's listening in, if you have a question or comment, you can uh, press 1 and we'll take your, your question or comment. Amen. We hope that we addressed, you know, we addressed, uh, I guess maybe uh, helped, helped you out a little bit with what, we, what was said, you know, concerning that situation of why you know, you may have felt the way you felt and why he would try to come back and things like that, you know. And then how the enemy is going to work, you know. And in that, because I'll just, I'll say this, it's not just him that you may have to look out for, you know. The, the, the enemy may send other ones as well, saying, hey, I'm the one, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, I, you know. And you have to be careful with that. You know, you have to be careful with that because the idea is to just throw you off track. If you dating somebody, you can't, that, that God didn't design for you, you can't be with the person that God has for you. And the Lord's not going to bring them into your life as long as you're distracted with somebody that he didn't bring there, you know. And so I will go as far as to say this. Make sure that you know you 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 know i think and i think you believe with all your heart that god meant when he said when he said that you you were going to meet your husband here in tennessee this is what you have to do you know and and i i pray that this will help you you make sure that there's room for your husband does that make any sense that um you make sure that is your husband's not being held up because somebody else is in his place. You see what I mean? That there that there's that you have prepared for him. That nobody's sitting at his place at the dinner table, if that makes any sense. And I guess what I'm saying is this most of us we know what it takes to have a successful relationship. And we know what a, a, a reasonable-minded spouse will and won't put up with. And we can't, if, if we say that we believe that God has somebody for us, we can't have anything in our lives or people in our lives that may not be good for what we expect God to bless us with. Does that make sense? And so we have to make sure that there is room there. My wife and I, we both went through that. Before we uh, got married, we did some house cleaning. I mean, before we met, we did some house cleaning. Just there were people that we were dealing with that we both, you know, around the same time, before we even knew one another, around the same time, we both took inventory of our lives. And we thought, what is this person doing here? You know, what, you know, what is this person? And so we just began to just push people out of our circle that didn't belong there. And I think in doing that, now the Lord didn't tell me, and I don't think he told you, hey, you need to get yourself ready because I'm bringing a spouse to you. It was just the Lord had put it in both of our hearts. You got some folks in your life that don't belong there. You, you know, don't, don't, don't have them there. And then once we cleaned house, then the Lord brought us together. Then the Lord introduced because we didn't even know one another, you know, at that, t at that time. And so it was like it was a, a faith walk, you know, where mm -hmm. we didn't say, okay, Lord, we're preparing, you know, I, I believe you because we were both in the same place. I wasn't interested in getting married and she wasn't either. We are just both just kind of just, okay, Lord, we're both ministers. We'll just preach your word and, you know, whatever happens, happens. Neither one of us were looking for a spouse when we met. You know, but at the same time, God knew what he was doing. And so mm -hmm. he had us to clean house what's good for us and what's not. And, you know, basically what happened was 
we ended up moving people out of our lives that would not have been good for our marriage, even though at the time we didn't understand that that's what was going on, mm -hmm. you know. And so sometimes, now, you know, <laughs> those, go ahead, <laughs> those exes can be uh, a, a thorn, if that make any sense, you know. And uh, we have to be watchful of that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, and it doesn't always have to be that you're dating somebody at the time, mm -hmm. that that's the person that's in the way. It could just be that person that in the back of your mind or in the back of your heart, this is my go-to person or this is my... Um, rebound person or this is my backup or you know what I'm saying it could be that person that oh we're just friends but when I feel like talking that's who I call or if I feel like hanging out that's who I hang out with or if I feel like going to dinner and don't want to go by myself that's who it is but even in that is what a lot of people might call friends that can be getting in the way because you're still building something with this person that should be for a spouse. Mm -hmm. And so if you're looking to get married, you have to you have to make sure there are boundaries mm -hmm. um, between you and that person. And I'm not just talking to you, but I mean to whatever man who might be, you know, maybe you're waiting for your wife or whatever woman you may be waiting on your husband. You have to make sure those boundaries are there and that when the Lord bring you together with that person, that that person has that number one spot in your life, in your heart, whatever. And there's no competition. There's no second guessing it. They don't have to wonder about it. You know, that's not the time to clean up. You know what I'm saying? The time to clean up is now. If you know um, you are, you know, waiting for that person, now is the time to take inventory, mm -hmm. you know, in your life to say, you know, what is this person really adding to my life? Are mm -hmm. they helping me to get closer to the Lord? Mm -hmm. You know, and even with, of course, you know, you and I have talked about this, even though, you know, I just haven't always been walking with the Lord. So, you know, I just didn't have this mindset before about the whole dating thing. What is the point of dating 20 different people? You know, you're not planning on marrying 20 different ones. So, you know, just wait for one. You <laughs> let the Lord lead you to somebody, <laughs> you know, and said, OK, well, last month, this person, I don't like them. So I'm going to call up this one. We're going to talk yeah. and all, you know, that's just that really is. Now you're talking about distractions. Yeah. You know, that is some true distraction. I can remember a time I wasn't dating anybody. The phone just ringing off the hook all the time, just always on the phone. And what are you talking about? It's not even fruitful. Mm -hmm. You know, just just having people to fill up time when really that's time you should be spending with the Lord, you mm -hmm. know, and if nothing spiritual is coming out of it, then something spiritual is being taken away from it, whether mm -hmm. we realize it or not. And so, you know, we have to, um, you know, keep that in mind that it's not just, oh, I'm dating somebody, but I know this isn't the person that I want to marry. So I need to get out of this relationship. But it can be a lot of different things. That could be in that place that could be taking your time, your attention, you know, and things like that. And then if you know that you're waiting on that spouse, you know, be praying and asking the Lord to prepare you for that spouse. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's another thing. And this is something else I, I'm kind of go all the way back. I didn't get a chance to comment on this where you were talking about um, that that ex may not be the only one that the devil try to use to come at you. I'm going to tell you. Um way back in like 2001 the Lord just spoke it to me I didn't know where it had come from that I was going to be a pastor's wife now that was not a desire of mine like me I don't think so I could never be no no pastor don't want me for a wife I can say that that was just my thought. I'm serious. I'm like, mm -mm. I shared that with my best friend from like, we've been friends since sixth grade. And I was, she was like, well, who do you think? I don't know. I'm not even trying to think about who it is out of my mind. I kid you not. The enemy sent, and I'm saying the enemy sent them. He was a pastor of somebody's church. 
living in all kinds of hell and making all kinds of excuses for living in sin. I'm, I'm serious, but he was the pastor of somebody's church. And he would, I met this um, guy, and, and he was like, oh, yeah, you're supposed to be my wife. I, and the Lord didn't tell me that. Now, the Lord had told me that I was going to be a pastor's wife. You, and you see how the devil just brought that right there? Just like that, you know, because I had that conversation with my friend, so it had already been spoken. The devil knew that, okay, well, she knows that the Lord spoke to her. So I'm going to send somebody her way. And so we have to be really, really I mean, if, if I had not been prayerful and if I had not been watchful, then I could have easily fell for that. Okay, well, this must be the one. Mm -hmm. No, ma'am, and no, sir. <laughs> because you can talk to somebody long enough. To, okay, now, wait a minute. You know, you're supposed to be living for the Lord. <laughs> living for the Lord, you know. And so I knew without a, I mean, even with, with him saying that and even speaking those particular words, the, the lifestyle didn't line up and I wasn't ready I wasn't ready and it wasn't him. That's just, I mean, that's all I can say. Mm -hmm. You know, I knew, I didn't know who it was going to be at that time. And I didn't know when it was going to happen, but I knew without a shadow of a doubt, it wasn't him, but it wasn't naturally so that I knew I was really spending a lot of time seeking the Lord about his will for my life at that particular time. And so I was able to discern that, you know what, this is not it. You know, and so and we have to be in that place because the enemy is going to he'll dress it up real nice. Mm -hmm. He don't you think for one minute that he don't know the word that was spoken from here. You've already talked about the dreams. You've talked about this other people. You understand what I'm saying? And so you have to be really, really prayerful um, about following the Holy Spirit because. You know, it's like you said, the devil will have spirits, evil spirits, transforming themselves to, you know, look like um, angels of light to try to lead you off anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but in the Lord's will. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Now, kind of to piggyback what you were saying, let's go to the second chapter of Titus real quick. And uh, we're going to read something just really quick here. So, if you have your Bibles, go to the second chapter of Titus. All right. Uh, we're going to read, uh, read verse 3 um, through 5. The aged women, likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. All right. So we're talking about preparation here. In the book of uh, James, the Bible tells us that faith without works is dead. Now, we're not just addressing you. We're addressing just, we're just speaking in general now to, to everyone that's listening and those that are watching. The Bible says that faith without works is dead. In other words, you know, you just like you and there are other women and maybe other men as well who believe that God has somebody for them. You have to prepare before they get here. You can't wait. And I'm not just talking to you. I'm just saying in general. You know, it, it, when you say that God has said something to you and you believe that, then the evidence of your beliefs is you preparing. Does that make sense? For instance. If um, when I, I tell you, if if I was Abraham, and God had told me that He was going to bless me with a son, I went out and bought, bought clothes. My mother, who's listening in now, uh, her and my father were married for five years before I was born. I was their firstborn together, and 
she prayed for a son and she told the Lord, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. And she went out and bought boy clothes before she knew I was a boy. She and, and she said people ridiculed her. How you know it's going to be a boy? You know, well, she knew it was because that's what she prayed for. And that's what she prepared for. And God honored her faith. My point is this. When when God speaks something to you, then the way you show him you believe it is by preparing for it. You don't wait till it get here and then say, OK, Lord, I'll be a good wife. Or I'll be, you know, uh, uh, just what these scriptures read. I'll, I'll be a good keeper at home and all this other stuff. If if you know what a husband desires and, and what the Bible says a wife is to be to that husband, then you have to be that before God give that husband to you, if that make any sense. And just in general, you know, if you if if some of you men who are listening or watching know that, you know, what a what a wife expects of a of a husband then you need to be that before she get here and don't try to play catch up you know <laughs> after after and so that's part of preparation mm -hmm. and so uh you know we're, we're talking about moving people and things out of your life that may not belong there we're not just talking about people of the opposite sex so many people have been hurt in relationships that they have become cantank cantankerous, they have become um, bitter towards relationships, towards marriage. Those aren't the type of people that we need in our circle. You know, now it's easy for us maybe to sit on the phone and listen to, it. yeah, yeah, I, I know what you mean, yeah, I understand. That's all fine, but you know, when you get married, you can't sit and listen to that. And so, Anybody that's not good for your marriage, whether they're somebody of the opposite sex or somebody of the same sex, they can't be there when God bring the person that he has for you there. People, there are also people, single people, you know, a lot of them, who, uh, like what you said earlier, are time fillers. You know, I don't have a man, I don't have a husband or don't have a wife or whatever so we'll hang out well all of that's got to be pushed out of the way because the problem is a lot of times when uh, people don't just tune in all of that just because you've gotten married in other words a lot of people don't have the mindset well you're married now so we can't do what we used to do if anything you'll find them hating the idea of your marriage and disrespecting your marriage. And so what I'm saying is don't wait until you get married to start trying to set boundaries and start trying to, you know, you have to do those things before you get married, you know, so that it, it's already in place. And God acknowledges our faith. In other words, the, the works that we show that, that prove that we believe what we what have been spoken already, you know, concerning mm -hmm who God may have for us or the fact that he has somebody for us. Amen. And so we, th those are just a few things. It, now, th those are outside things. Now, we dealing with ourselves, you know, we know what the Bible says. We have to be keepers at home. We have to love children, talking about the, the women, how they're to honor. Uh, we have to start preparing ourselves. And, you know, um, I think most of us, if we'll be honest, we know the things that are in our life that may be shortcomings that we have. Uh, and we know what's beneficial to marriage and what's not. And so before that spouse get here, we have to take those things to the Lord. Lord, your word says that I, I'm to obey my own husband and I'm to submit to my own husband. And so I don't believe that I'm there yet. And so, you know. God won't, uh, 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 I guess what you could say, a ready-made bride or a ready-made husband, somebody that's already there. Because I'm going to tell you, if God brings people, the reason why so many people are held up already, and because God can't bring somebody to you when you're not prepared for them. Because all you're going to do is mess it up and they're just going about their business and you're going about yours. 
And, and then if you're not careful, you'll say, well, maybe that wasn't the person that God had for me. It could have been. But you just weren't ready, you see. And so you have to be in that place where you are prepared. You know, you ha we have to be prepared for the person that God has for us before they get here. You know, now some there are going to be some areas where we can grow in, you know, even after marriage, of course. But w we have to make sure that we are doing our part in preparing, you know, like, God, I believe that you're going to bless me. And so here's what I'm going to do, you know, and it, it might not be a bad idea for those that are listening in and those that are watching to make a list of those things. You know, who's in my circle that shouldn't be there? Not saying that we just push everybody away. You know, uh, and just don't talk ever again. But there are some times we let people in our that's we let people close to us that shouldn't be close to us just because you, they're just not good for marriage. And, and I'm telling you, you find out what folks think about you when you get married. You know, you know, especially if they're single and everybody's not going to rejoice with you. You know, <laughs> everybody's not going to rejoice. And, but the problem is. Those folks that are like that should be pushed away before marriage comes, you know. And so we, it, it's wise to just sit down and make a list of those things, you know, people, uh, things. Not only the people and things, but things that we may do. For instance, you may be used to going shopping at 10, 11 o'clock at night. Well, you know, most husbands, they're not going, they don't want their wife out there that late. Now, I know I don't. And I don't, I don't feel like going shopping at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. So making those kind of adjustments, if that make any sense, you know. Going to, becoming a new person, basically. Preparing yourself for what's good for marriage, and you know, and, and things like that. And so that means making changes with our lifestyle sometimes. Those things might not be harmful when you're single, but... They could be when you're married. And so, you know, again, the idea is to prepare for marriage. And so you, you make those adjustments before, before marriage takes place. And that's just one less argument that you have to have or whatever the case may be. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you were um, talking about lists, and I'm just say this one last thing about it. It's a part of preparation list, but on the other side, because, you know, we've had this conversation many times about women um, who make lists whether you're writing it down or just have your checklist in your mind about what the perfect husband is. He's going to be this, 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 and that. A part of that preparation is throwing those lists out the window and allowing God to tell you who's the perfect man for you because we can get it wrong all day long because we're looking at it naturally. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're not, yeah, we might say, oh, yeah, I want him to be a Christian. And then we got all these other things that it's got to be, mm -hmm. you know. And what we discussed before is that we might have, um, I think we, we talked a lot about money because, you know, that's a big thing with, um, you know, when oh, you got to have a six-figure income. But then this is the thing. What if the Lord bring you that man when it's only a four-figure income, but the Lord's plan is that six years down the line he'll have that six-figure income. And then you just miss out altogether because you got your eyes focused on this one particular thing. And that's why it's important that we don't look at things naturally and we get rid of those lists as a part of our preparation and say, okay, Lord, you know, whoever you have for me, just prepare me to receive that person. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think about, you know, how we were in a place where, you know, we weren't even thinking about marriage. Well, my list was out the window at that point. Forget about a list, Lord, just... You know, use me however you want to use me. I'm not worrying about a list because I'm not even worrying about getting married. Because mm -hmm. I know I had mine, you know, <laughs> but it was out the window at that point. And therefore, I was prepared to receive what the Lord had for me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so we have to be in that place where um, letting go of the natural things that we're accustomed to and the way we're accustomed to doing things and just being able to grab hold to um, however the Lord want to lead us into it. <laughs> yeah. And so many people, especially women, they make a list on what they want what they want in their husband instead of making a list on, okay, Lord, this I need to work on me, you know, and, and this is the list I need to be paying attention to. What your word says I should be for him. So we we 
we make a list on what we want our husband to be, and the husband that we want God to prepare for us, you know, for, for the women, but uh, not necessarily making a list of what we need to do to prepare, you know, on our side of it. Mm -hmm. And right. so we have to, you know, especially when we are um, prayerful and God has spoken and said he has a husband or a wife or whatever the case may be, we have to make sure that we don't have in our own minds what that's going to be. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's looks or whatever the case may be, you know, we have to make sure that we're not caught up. Because I'm telling you, I, I can't tell you the number of times I've heard people, women and men, preach, well, you know, you just tell God what you want and hit. No, God don't, God don't do that. You can tell what you want in a spouse. He need to be 6'10", and uh, no, you know, <laughs> God don't care about your list, you know. He's already prepared somebody for you. And he knew that they were going to be your spouse before you were born. And so he just, God might have just chose, hey, this person is going to be 5'9", or whatever the case may be. So that's what it is. Now, your list don't line up with his will. So, you know, who's who's going to win there, you know. And so we just have to be careful that we're not close-minded to what God has, you know. And I'll give you a, a prime example. The children of Israel in Jesus' day, they didn't accept him. And part of the reason why was because he didn't come here looking like a king. They knew that the prophets had spoke, that, that God was going to send a king to Israel to deliver them. They were looking at it naturally so. Mm -hmm. At that time, Israel was under Roman rule. And so in their minds, God is going to send us this. His, he's going to be called the son of David. And so that means he's going to look something like David. And they all knew David was a handsome man. You know, and somebody that looked like a king when he became grown. And so in their mind, that's what we're looking for. Now, it's not a coincidence that the Bible says, I think it's in the book of Isaiah, that when the Messiah would come, there would be no beauty in him that we should desire him. In other words, there wasn't anything handsome about him. Women wasn't flocking to him in church because he looked good, anything like that. And so it was easy for them to miss the Messiah because of their own preconceived ideas of what he would be like, what he would look like. They thought he was going to be a charismatic man. He's just going to be the greatest speaker and he was just going to, you know. When in fact, he, according to the word of God, he wasn't handsome. There was no beauty in him. In other words, we just have to tell it like it is. His earthly body that God prepared for him was ugly. You know, and so... Well, you know, Messiah can't be ugly. And son of David can't be ugly. Who is that? But, you know, and so they, they crucified him. Because when he came, he wasn't what they expected. And a lot of times that's what happens with us. You know, when God sends us or blesses us or whatever, we, we look past that. And unfortunately, there are Jews to this day that are still looking for the first coming of the Messiah. Because they missed him the first time. And they believe, some of them believe, well, we can take you the way he's buried now, you know. Except they can't, you know. And so that's that's what happens a lot of times. You'll be years and years down the road, missed what God had for you because of our what we wanted for ourselves. And so <laughs> that's part of the preparation. It's preparing ourselves to receive what God has for us. You know, and that means getting out of our minds, our preconceived ideas of what attracts, what's attractive to us or what we expect and things like that, you see. Amen. All right, does anyone have any questions or comments? <laughs> All right. All right, I guess since there are no questions or comments, did we address everything for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that being all, we'll go ahead and ask you to close out with a word of prayer. Okay. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we've had to um, share in your word. Lord, we thank you for those who have tuned in um, from week to week, Lord, and my prayer is that 
You will continue to use us, continue to pre prepare all of our hearts to receive your word. Continue giving us direction concerning our family, concerning marriage. And Lord, um, we lift up our sister here and others who uh, may be waiting for the spouse that you have for them, Lord. That as they're waiting, Lord, that they will continue to walk by faith, prepare themselves to receive what it is you have for them, Lord, and to always be alert and aware of the tricks and tactics of the enemy um, who comes to try to distract, to destroy, um, and to get us to lose focus um, from the things that you have for us. Lord, we thank you and we praise you that you're more powerful um, than any thing in this world or anything that the enemy can bring to us. We thank you, Lord God, for that power and that authority that you have given us. And I pray, Lord, for every home that is represented, that your peace would abide there, Lord. And um, wherever there may be hurt, Lord, that healing will take place um, in marriage and even for those who are preparing for marriage, Lord, that the things of, of the past will not hold them back from receiving the things that you have for them in the future. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we thank you all for tuning in, and we pray that something was said that have uh, blessed you. And uh, we pray that you will tune in the same time next week for more of God's Blueprint for Family. Have a good night.